you told me that you'd started uh, work at uh, NME in about 1984, is that right? Uh, yeah, uh, Yes, I think so. When I, when I came to London, first moved to London to go, uh, to go to the Royal College of Art to study illustration, <laughs> um, I, the first sort of job I ever got was for the enemy illustrating the letters page. And that was as soon as I arrived in London, so 81 actually. Oh, right. But then I started to work for them and do a, a cartoon strip and illustrations in about 85 or 6, I think. So I will probably have been seeing your work then since about 87 when I was a reader of the enemy. Um, yes, I was in the enemy right about then, yes. Yeah. Um, and you said that over the years you've done album covers and poster designs. Well, <clears throat> after I left the Royal College of Art I got a job with a graphic design company called Assorted Images who, um, that was somebody called Malcolm Garrett who designed all the Buzzcocks sleeves. And uh, at the time when I sort of worked with him, he was doing Duran Duran covers and Culture Club, Simple Minds, all of that sort of thing. And so I, I thought it would be a good way to earn some money um, and, and fun whilst working on my own projects, but it, but it took up all my time. Okay. So I eventually I had to kind of leave in order to stop doing Captain Star and so on. Okay, so that, that makes sense. Yes, it makes sense. Um, so, what was the next um, step um, in your sort of following the path as being um, a cartoonist? Well, it was kind of an accidental thing in, in the sense that um, I was doing illustrations for the NME and I always included writing and ideas in the, in the illustrations and drawings. And so they asked me, the art editor asked me if I'd be interested to do a weekly strip. Um, and obviously that was a brilliant opportunity. So I came up with Captain Star, um, the Captain Star characters, and called the strip Rockets Passing Overhead. And, and I, I proposed it as a single drawing every week, which was rejected because they said that it didn't make sense. You know, I was wanting to do something quite surreal and not to do with music, just something that people who are into music would hopefully like. And um, so they rejected that. And a few months later I had an exhibition and I'd done about 18 of these single rockets passing overhead drawings. And the art editor came, and David Quantic, who um. was one of the writers of the enemy, I think he edited a, a section, I can't remember what it was called. They came along and they said, actually when you read these all together they work really well as a world. So they suggested put three or four of them together almost randomly and they become a kind of strip. So the early Captain Star strips were, I was just doing single drawings and, and then shuffling them around to find ones that sort of worked in a set of three, so, which is why they didn't have punchlines or stories <laughs> or, or any kind of coherent sense whatsoever. I've never heard of someone finding their vocation as a comic strip artist from that beginning. That's absolutely Completely brilliant. Non-narrative. Non sort of. This is this is um, yeah. this is Dadaism, uh, I think. Um, so, um, what was that a kind of a road to Damascus moment for you? Well, the trouble was in a set. Yes, it was. I mean, I was a big fan of Edward Gorey, <laughs> whose little books, some of them are wonderfully disjointed, but somehow they add up into not exactly an A to B narrative, but kind of A to, in a P to C, to, you know, and it somehow adds up into a world. So that was kind of my inspiration with Captain Star initially that I didn't have to do an ABC narrative. But, uh, but the trouble is that once you start to do three drawings, then it, quite quickly, within a year, I was thinking of it like one, two, three, you know. And then, you know, now I still do a strip in The Guardian, the Loomis cartoon strip. And, um, and, and, I, and, and they are much more structured. They have a punchline, usually, or at least a conclusive thought. Oh, in my mind. <laughs> <laughs> so is this, is this you saying now? Is this you going mainstream? Yes. <laughs> I mean, having a punchline, that's what I mean. Not working for that. I mean, well, this is interesting, sort of, because when I was doing Rockets Passing Overhead, I approached a syndication company called Night Features, and I, you know, to see if they would syndicate Captain Star all over the world, you know. And 
I was turned down because he said that basically it wasn't syndicatable. Nobody would. It was too weird, you know, too too weird for people to want. So years, years and years later, I got an email from Night Features, and I couldn't open it, and it was so I kind of tried to open it with various things, and you know, it was, so I wrote back to Peter Knight and sort of said, you know, dear Peter, I've got this email, I can't open it. Can you send it again? And he and he wrote back saying, wonderful to hear from you, but don't open it. It's a virus that sent emails. You know. <laughs> and he said, but come in and see me because I've been watching you doing other work. So I came in and I showed him, I don't know, Loomis and whatever things I've been doing, small birds singing. And and, uh, and I said, I'm much more commercial now. And he said, no, you're not. No, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, thought that was, I, was, I took that as a compliment. Okay. <laughs> I think we'd all agree that you're not. <laughs> uh, that's, it's wonderful to hear that something positive has come out of a virus. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Fantastic. But somehow that seems to be in the spirit of your work, if you don't mind me saying it. No, I, I agree. <laughs> um, so, um, to sort of bring things round a little bit towards, um, towards Linda, uh, tell us about Small Birds Singing. Um, <clears throat> well, Small Birds Singing um, appeared in The Times for, I think, about eight years, uh, until there was a sudden change of editor, and then they immediately... <laughs> Change lots of things and you get dropped and so on. But um, so small bit singing, I was actually approached by the Times to do a script for them, which was I think the only time I've ever been approached by a newspaper. I can't, I can't remember. But um, and you know I brought a few of them here, and I, I was thinking about a sort of country house and a strange family, kind of inspired by I don't know Agatha Christie and Edward Gorey a bit with his topiary and. You know, all those kind of things. This is the first ever strip I did. And, um, and, uh, and I wanted to do something a bit like sort of Rupert the Bear, where it had, um, you know, a, dra a drawing and, and type written and type underneath. Uh, and I had this idea about a cast of characters and a magician who had six fingers and could do special tricks. And, and anyway, I. I they sort of went with it, and it was pretty weird. Um, and, it, and slowly, the initial characters I thought I was going to do work about kind of um, faded away, and the characters that Linda uses in her films kind of took over. Um, I can't think what else to say, really. But when, when I mean, Linda always, you, you had the time well, to So Linda always liked the strip, and when she started making films, asked me if she could use the characters and I said, yeah, you know, that'd be brilliant. <laughs> so and so I watched them become three dimensional stop motion puppets and uh, and it's been great. And you didn't mention earlier that we're cousins. We're actually cousins. Well no I was going to do that oh. when I I have that up my oh, sleeve. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 I've got that and I'll use that in a bit and everyone will go more. Oh. So uh, <laughs> I was just gonna say that you know that that uh, and anyway, yeah. But basically, I gave Linda, the, you know, photocopies of the strips, which about 400 strips, and so she started from from that. Really. However, this wasn't your first brush with animation, was it? Because another of your strips uh, had a had an afterlife. Bit. The, the Captain Starship yeah. in the Enemy. Yes. Um, well, when I was drawing that strip in the Enemy, Pete Bishop, who I don't know, I know at least one or two people know Pete. Anyway, he wrote to me. And he'd just started a company called The Film Garage in Wardour Street. And they'd made a Time Out commercial, and they were making commercials and things. And he wrote to me, Care of the Enemy, and sent me some postcards and said, you know, you know I love your work. Here, here's some postcards. Let's meet. So we met and got on. We still share a studio now, you know. And uh, we started animating Captain Star. And eventually, seven years later, <laughs> We got the money to make a series, TV series. So that was what year first. was that 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 went ahead? God, uh, I think '97. I think it aired in the UK um, on CITV at something like 4:15. And well, it probably wasn't CITV then, but 4:15 in the afternoon. Some sort of. It's been most successful in Canada, where they showed it on a cable channel at sort of eight at night and midnight and in the afternoon, like you know. 
So I, st I still get emails from Canada, but um, it didn't get. It got shown once, I think, in the UK. Um, to see criminal. Well, <laughs> it was, you know, f fabulous to get the chance to make that. It was thir 13, 22 minute episodes or whatever they are. Um, Hang on, 13, 22 minute episodes? I, I think it's 22. Wow, that's fantastic. I remember, but yeah. I seem to remember seeing it at a tube station once. Ah, that was really, really, that was before the TV series. That was okay. when Pete and I were making little tests mm. with, he would shoot a commercial and then we would spend half the night shooting a test, uh, you know, uh, on the end of the film and it would get developed with, in the old days of the film, it would get developed along with the commercial thing, you know, so it was a way of doing it cheaply. <laughs> And, and yeah, there was some experimental television yeah. on the tube stations. It would have been about, I don't know, 80, 88, or, 88 88. or something. And um, yeah, yes, he did sit. That's right. It's not when you dream. <laughs> 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 yeah.